right, folks, John Rush, Drive Radio. I'll be your host today for this particular review. My son Richard is behind the camera. This is the 2015 uh, Toyota Avalon Hybrid model. And as Richard comes around to the front and kind of looks around, and we apologize for it being dirty. We've had a lot of snow here in Colorado right now. You can kind of see around from the backdrop that the roads have just now gotten dry even today, and it's so cold out. We just haven't had a chance to wash the car, so bear with us on the on a little bit of the dirtiness. We try to keep them as clean as we can, but it's tough when the roads are all wet. Quad beam lights on this car that you can actually see. Uh, this car was redesigned a couple of years ago. It's got a reface coming, I believe, in 2016. This is, in my opinion, a fantastic car. It's a great buy. This car, as equipped right here, which has a technology package on it, so the car we're actually driving, the way it looks right now, the way it stands, $44,000 and some change. I'm averaging in the high 30s on uh, miles per gallon. Uh, trunk is a little bit shorter on the hybrid because of the battery pack that sits up here. We'll talk about that once we get into the interior portion. But you know, it's a really great car for being a, a luxury car. Granted, you could step up and move into a Lexus or something of that nature. But as, a, as far as luxury sedans go, the Avalon has always been a great buy for the money. You get a lot of car. Again, $44,000. This car is fully equipped leather. All the bells and whistles inside that we'll get into in just a few minutes. Sunroof. Uh, adaptive cruise control. You, you name it, this car pretty much has it. There's really not a lot of things this particular car doesn't have. And again, you're, we, we, we actually uh, test drove, and, and it's, it's actually in the sidebar on our reviews. We did the ES300H, which is the hybrid version essentially of this car. Not quite exactly the same car, but built on similar platform. Uh, that car, if I'm not mistaken, was around $48,000, $49,000, so it's about $5,000 more than this car. And in some people's cases, they'd rather own a Toyota because of the dealer network, the fact there's more dealerships out there, things like that. Those are all things you need to factor in, by the way, when you go to look and buy a new car. So, again, this is the 2015 Toyota Avalon Hybrid. We'll go take a ride. We'll come back. We'll do the interior, and then I'll give you my opinion at the very end of the review, so stay with us. All right, folks, we're going to do the driving portion now. 2015 Toyota Avalon. I'll show, I'll show you another few interior pieces even before we get going. So one thing real quick. It does have power sunroof. Not going to open it because it's really cold. Now it's not power as far as the sunshade goes. Manual back and forth. But again, nice, nice, nice size roof. It's not huge, but for the length of the roof this car has, it works out fine. I'll close that to help us with our lighting. One thing that's really cool on this car that I really enjoy, I'm going to push on the brake and actually start the car and watch the center stack and actually what it does. It's just kind of a cool feature the way it kind of turns on. You'll see it here in a minute kind of come across. And it just looks really cool. They've done a good job with it. One thing Richard noted, even he and his fiance both, who are in the younger generation, the fact that it's got touch and knobs both, I, I really like. This is a very easy system to learn. It's not something where you need to get the manual out and check things out. It's just a very, very, very easy system to learn and, and go through. It works out fantastic. By the way, this particular model we're driving has a fantastic sound system in it. It works really, really well. So as I go to reverse, put it in reverse, and it does show you where you're going to back up. So I can actually, and that clunk you just sound heard behind Richard's head there, he's in the back seat, is this rear sunshade actually going up and down because it actually will, will keep the sun in from, or keep the sun from coming in in the back. Uh, as far as the heating and all that is concerned, again, very intuitive. You, you, ju you just touch these and the, the system changes. Now, I'm not depressing anything. I'm really just setting my finger over the top of these, and that's how you control it. Same thing with the fan speed works exactly the same way. Uh, if you want to go and look at your, your apps for all the different things that are built into the Intune system. Again, very, very easy system to use. Getting into the steering wheel now, this does have adaptive cruise. You set the cruise down here. This changes how far you are from the car in front of you. And of course, all your phone buttons are here. You can change the display which I don't know if Richard can actually catch that or not, but we, I've averaged 37 miles to the gallon, and a lot of that's been highway. So if I was in city only, I think that would actually go up. Um, there's some more controls over here on the left as far as lane departure, or blind spot monitoring, I should say. There's no lane departure on this car, but blind spot monitoring, memory for the seats, power mirrors, of course, which is pretty standard. Now, here's, here's the different modes, too, I want to show you that I can't while we're driving. It does have the EV mode, the Eco mode, in the sport mode and i will tell you when you go to sport mode on this car it actually flies it works really 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 well this nice hidden compartment here is really cool the other thing i like about this which i'll show you right now if you've got a cell phone 
there's a slit here where your cord can actually come up. You can actually set your phone right on top and it's rubberized where the phone doesn't go sliding all around. And it's also this particular model has the option where you can actually charge your phone with an adapter wirelessly if you so desire. So another cool feature that the car's actually got. But let's take a quick drive. I'll get my seatbelt on here and we'll just take a drive and kind of show you what the, how the interior of the car actually sounds. This is a very, very comfortable car. You could just, right then, the engine just started. You didn't hear it because I can kind of feel it when we get going, but I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and let you hear this car is extremely quiet. Just a very quiet, comfortable car. You know, who is this car targeted to? You know, I hate to say it, but probably people my age. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid-50s, or I'm in my 50s, I should say now. Um, you know, for me and my wife, uh, this car is fantastic. Plenty of room in the back if you're going to take anybody along with you for a ride or if you're going to go travel in this car. There's plenty of room in the back seat. And again, the trunk space on the hybrid model is a little shorter than you would get on a regular gas modeled uh, Avalon. But you know, who is, the, who is the Avalon targeted to? Somebody that wants a really nice luxury car that doesn't want to pay luxury car prices. That's probably the best way for me to explain the Avalon. The car works fantastic. It handles well, drives well. I've felt like this about Avalon for quite some time and every time they redesign it, it continues to look better and better. This is one of the best buys in the luxury car market. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed the driving portion. Again, 2015 Toyota Avalon. And again, this is their luxury premium sedan in the Toyota lineup. Real quick, we'll show you the trunk. Hold the button down and it is an automatic opening trunk if it would actually do it. Usually it flips right up. It's a little cold outside. The springs might be down a little bit. It, it's not automatic in that it actually has a power up and a power down. It just opens very easily, as you can see. Nothing major, it's pretty pretty easy. Uh, as you can see, off the lighting in here, we try to park it in a sense, in, in a way where you can actually see a little bit better. You'll notice it doesn't quite have the depth that a normal Avalon would have, again, because of the battery being right behind the back seat. So you do have a little bit shorter trunk space. Is that a big factor? Well, you'd have to determine if it's a big enough factor. With the increased fuel economy, this car is rated for around 40 miles to the gallon. Uh, you know, you'd have to kind of do the math and figure out whether or not having a little less trunk space versus having the hybrid works. One other thing about the hybrid we mentioned in the driving portion is they run fantastic. Toyota's hybrid system just, just flat out hauls. I mean, it really does. It's got the three different modes which we showed you. The car works extremely well. Let me get into the back seat here though and show you what the interior room is like in this car. Put my phone and the keys in here. So as I climb in, First of all, you can see seat this seat all the way back. I've got more than enough space. I mean, leg room, there's a good 10, 8, 10 inches here with this seat all the way back. There is a center armrest that folds down here in the middle or the center, center console folds down. And it's actually very nice, wood grain lid, couple of cup holders. Uh, controls back here. They do have heated seats back here in the back. I can also control the rear tent back here from this, this uh, center stack right here in the middle. And nice apportionments inside. Again, for, for being still a Toyota, this isn't a Lexus. You've got, this is a hard panel, but it looks soft. Soft here, here, wood grain. Of course, automatic window in a door pocket. And again, as I go to climb out of this car, headroom is ample. Grab handle right here, which is kind of nice. I can spin right around, hop right out, and away we go. So I tell you what, I'll let Richard get, get around to the front of the car. You know, one thing too, we'll, I'll, I'll just make a note of real quick is as you listen to the to the sound of the of the door shut, it doesn't have the typical tinny sound that you'll get on a lot of the what I would consider lightweight sedans. Again, this car is very very comfortable. One thing we mentioned driving it, but I'll point out some of this right now. It's it's kind of an interior feature. That's why we're doing it now. They've actually sprayed foam in the front panel the rear panel and throughout the car along with acoustic glass to actually get the interior noise down as much as they can. And I will tell you it's a very nice comfortable quiet vehicle inside that's hard to show in the driving portion so I wanted to cover it now. So Richard he'll hop around the passenger side and I'll jump into the driver's seat. All right folks and I'm going to turn the fan down here we're now in the very front or I'm in the front seat not the very front seat the only front seat the car has of course and plenty of room up here and this is this is just a joy of a car to drive and you can just hear i've got the car actually on right now because it's kind of cold outside you can hear the engine just start up but again it's a very quiet car interior wise we talked about some of that in the driving portion uh this car i mean the steering wheel layout is nice the console is nice one thing that we need to show you this little this little uh 
area slides up. There's a storage area here. And this actually has the, uh, I think they call it the IQ. Uh, I'm not positive on that. But you can do wireless charging with your cell phone in this. Of course, there's an adapter you have to use. One of the nice things I like is the way the center stack is put together here. Uh, we showed you some of this again, the driving portion, but everything is touch, basically touch centric. So I just touch whatever it is. There's no button to push. It just senses my fingers touching it, much like a, an iPhone would. Uh, again, this car, interior wise, quiet, enjoyable, comfortable. They've done a great job on the apportionments. Uh, this is a car that you really need to get out and drive. Richard and I were talking earlier that if you compare this car to really even the high end Camry, Look at the difference in the price of the two and the trim models that you like. You may find that you can move into an Avalon for not a whole lot more money than you can a Camry and get a whole lot more car for the money, really, at the end of the day. Not that Camry's a bad car. This just ends up being a car that's one step above where the Camry's at. So we really have enjoyed driving it. So I tell you what, let's, uh, let's finish out the review, and I'll give you my opinion here in just a second. All right, folks, opinion portion, 2015 Toyota Avalon. Car just started again, as you can hear again. Uh, we're in the cold Colorado climate right now, so it, with a hybrid, it will cycle periodically. What do I like about this car? The hybrid portion, what you just heard start up. I really do enjoy that on this car. You sacrifice a little bit of trunk room in that, uh, but the car works fantastic. It's got great power. It works well in the snow. Uh, it's very comfortable inside. It's quiet. The hybrid drive system just works fantastic. Toyota's got that so sophisticated now, you can hardly tell when the, when the engine actually starts and stops when you're in driving conditions. It just works fantastic. You know, what are the negatives of the Toyota Avalon? You know, the looks probably still aren't as aggressive as I would like to see. You, know, you can move into a Lexus and get a little bit different front end look, a little different lighting look, things like that. But you know, if that's not a big deal to you and you want to save five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, you know, this car versus driving a, a full ES car, you know, look at both cars and compare. And as I said earlier in the review, in some cases, the fact that Toyota has a lot more dealers out there, there's a bigger, larger dealer network of Toyota than there is Lexus when it comes to warranty work, which by the way, this car comes with an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty on the hybrid system. And it also comes with a two year, 25,000 mile uh, maintenance included when you buy the car. So this is a car that, yeah, you probably want to make sure that you're close to a dealer. And in, the, in our particular case here locally in the Denver market, we don't have a lot of Lexus dealers here. So if you're comparing this to an ES, you may want to look at this over the ES model on the Lexus just because there's more Toyota dealers than there are Lexus dealers. Even, even though it's the same company, you've got to go to each individual dealership to get your service done. So with that, hope you enjoyed our review. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this review today that we've done for you. And uh, as my son always says, check out all the rest of the reviews that we have. Please make sure you go out and drive whatever car it is you're looking at yourself. Uh, don't, re don't go off of any review that you watch, either ours or somebody else's or what you read. You need to go out and experience the car for yourself. But remember, we're on air, drive radio, every Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's here in the Denver, Colorado market. You can catch us on the TuneIn app at 560thesource.com. Just look, actually, just look for 560 here in the Denver market. You can also watch us live on YouTube. We stream our broadcasts every Saturday on our YouTube channel, Drive Radio, all one word. You can also find us on our website at drive-radio.com. And you can listen to us live right on our radio station's website, which is 560thesource.com. With that, we're out of here. Hope you have a great time, and thanks again for watching. <laughs>